the entrance. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Follow uh, you. Let's... Traverse over. Some whoops here. I, I guess the entrance was higher, eh? Right? I don't know. Okay, let's go see. I think. Right there. Yeah. It looks beautiful. Man, it gives me butterflies. Me too. Cool. Cool. Glad we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, I think if you just go down and not cut right, stay close behind me. And don't die. I think the crux for this is just going to be uh, the entrance. Making sure that I'm in the right spot. And uh, yeah, this is also my first time skiing it, which I wouldn't be so nervous about if there wasn't a blind guy behind me. So, <laughs> But yeah, I'm pretty confident we'll be able to stomp it. Yeah, so you just sidestep, traverse a little bit, maybe switch edge, and then... Skadoosh. No, if, you, if, if something happens to him in the middle, it's not going to feel good for either of us. Yeah. Is that the drop? No, so there's this rock. Yeah. And then there's another one where my pole is pointing. Yeah. And then there's the farthest one, which is 30 feet down. Yeah. And you just air and stay centered, land, and then there's a defined track that we're gonna follow. Ready? Yeah, buddy. Good? Yep. Take and bake. Three, two, one, drop it! That was so bad. Um, how did the free skiing go, Tristan? Obviously, <laughs> it didn't go as planned. Take one. My name is Tristan Rogers. I'm 21 years old. I've been guiding Max since June 2018, so right after the 2018 Paralympics. I didn't have the opportunity to be uh, on the Canadian team myself, so this, this chance that I had was kind of a, a lottery win for me. It's the Canadian Paralpine team, so they're kind of a big deal. I'm Mac Marcou, I'm 22 years old, and I ski on the Canadian Para Alpine ski team. So I ski downhill, super G, super combined, uh, giant slalom and slalom. You know, I grew up, like every kid, watching so many ski movies. You know, like free skiing for a blind person isn't really something that a lot of people are looking into. A lot of people are just, you know, like we were trying to get into racing and there's a lot of disabled people doing super rad things. I want to be a part of that movement and pushing forward into stretching the boundaries of what people are already doing. I don't really think of him as visually impaired other than the fact that he can't read his program. But the stuff we do in the gym, even skiing, like it's constantly a challenge for him. The easiest way to like describe it or get a feel for it is if like you hold your hands up in front of your face, like, you know, two inches out from your nose. That kind of would represent like where my blind spot is. He uses his other senses. If you really get to know him and watch him well, he, he listens selectively well and his like sense of body awareness is incredible. Like his balance and where his body is in space is just like not natural almost.
back, bud. <laughs> Blew your corner. Sorry. So not to get the seat, bro. I can't understand how the hell. And, and I know that it's this is the tour. You know, I was eight years old. I was in school, and I started like second row from the back or in the back of the class. And um, every week, I couldn't really see the chalkboard. Or every two weeks, and slowly just kind of moved one desk forward and one desk forward. And my head got a little bit closer to the papers when I was writing and reading. And of the class, so I was up against the chalkboard and just like looking up at it. And I think, like at that point, my teacher was like, "Hey, like." Do you have glasses or do you need glasses? And contacted my parents and were saying that I couldn't really see. And we had gone to the eye doctor not that long ago, so it didn't really make sense that I was 20, 20, four months ago, and now I was up against the chalkboard and still struggling to see. And then, so I took another two weeks, and when I went back again, my vision had gone down even more. And at that point, they'd send me to Toronto and then spent a little bit of time there at Sick Kids just trying to figure out and get a diagnosis and see what was going on because it was, I think, pretty, pretty scary for my parents. I remember saying to him out in the hallway, you know, that you can, I'm going to allow you to be mad for a month. He looked at me right that day. I'll never forget. And he goes, Mom, I don't need a month. He goes, I said, this is what I have. He goes, let's just get it started. I looked at them and I said, well, your mother needs a month. As you all know, Mac has a Stardart's disease and he would like not to be treated any differently than just Mac. Hi, everybody. Stardart's may take my vision, but it's not going to take my dreams. I had a like, speed and adrenaline-based childhood. Definitely spent a lot of time around stock car racing and go-kart racing as a little kid. BJ and Mac were obviously the most competitive, and wherever BJ went, Mac would follow him. So they had fluorescent orange carts, and Mac would sit behind BJ, and no matter what move BJ did, Mac would follow him and had no fear back then either. Never started ski racing until, until I started to lose my vision, and when we realized that maybe go-kart racing wasn't going to be a thing. I'm so happy I won! Points championship, see? <laughs> you came second. Yeah. I'm very proud of you. If you put it that way, then yeah. And then someone from Alpine Canada have caught wind of me losing my vision, that I was involved in go-kart racing really young, and that I like to, uh, yeah, go fast. And so we pitched the idea to the boys, and we had some videos that Alpine Canada had sent us. Just watch those, and the kids were like, hey, this looks like it could be uh, something. It's, uh, it looks exciting, it looks like a lot of fun, and uh, why don't we give it a go? And that's how it that's how it started. So we decided to try skiing together, and then once we started training, it took us quite a long time. It's very hard to try and go through a course, and you have so many things going on in your head, yet he has to follow someone in front of him now, and then I have to look back and make sure I'm, at, I'm staying at a right pace. I think the hardest thing was skiing close behind somebody. You have to like learn to carry the speed together and kind of move as one. There's definitely a lot of like key terms that, that we use. Like everything, you try and use as short of a description as possible because stuff happens so fast. You don't have enough time to say, hey, we're coming up to a roll when you're doing the 120, 130. Right. It was a little bit of a struggle at the start, but once we picked up, I think just kind of knowing each other a lot, it made it a lot easier. It went fairly quick after that. There's only one, one winner of the training before we went to our first nationals. My brother being a little bit older and super, super keen to ski race as well, we, we worked really well together and Mac, BJ, race round one. And then we came into like kind of the technical races, and that's when we ended up getting our first podium at a world champs. And that's when we also realized, like, holy, maybe like next year we're coming into Sochi to head to Russia, and we could have an opportunity. When I was a little kid, I had a, like a student card, and I'd just gone blind. 
I was probably nine or 10 years old and I had like a label maker at home and we had put on the back like, my goal is to ski at the Paralympics in 2014 in Sochi, Russia. My brother was uh, struggling with back injuries, very similar to mine, um, a lot of disc issues. And then I'd say 10 days before the games, his back went out again. It stung, especially after we worked up to this for the past four or five years before that, so. It was really challenging and all he wanted to do was like ski together and make our parents and our family proud of what we'd done for the last bunch of years. And I think it, BJ was still there in so many ways that it made it a lot, a lot better, so. But I think a big moment for us was when he, uh, he raced his GS race there. Can he find a gold medal in the final event for the men? They suck for the line and it must be gold for Canada and Marku. It is by 2.26 seconds, Mac Marku. When Mac came down and won the race, they actually let me go in for the finish corral. We ended up just grabbing each other and bawling our eyes out like, oh wow, all this time and all the hard work and effort put in and you finally, finally did it, got a gold medal at the games. It just turned into this like hectic snowball that <laughs> they just kept progressing. Yeah. So I'm thinking just slide down, catch the edge, slide across. Over that then, hump? Yeah, either you can go over the hump, make a right, right footer around it, or we can just sidestep below that hump and then do a spies and then ski right of the spine. Do some visualization. <laughs> Stargardz affects about 1 in 10,000 um, people. It starts usually in childhood. It uh, is a slow progressing condition. Initially it starts out with distortion and blurry vision and eventually that blind spot happens. When you look at Stargardz as a degenerative disease, you know, my vision is constantly going to be getting worse and if I have the opportunity and the time now, why not pursue as many things as I can before, you know, my vision gets bad enough and I, I can't really do things at the same capacity. It's slowly going down, so you might as well take advantage of like every day. Definitely free skiing a little bit, but I'm sure they're terrifying if you can see. When you can't see it, you never really know if you're on the ground or you're not. You have the weirdest vertigo ever. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like a come down to about where I am, and then you do like a speed 180, and just let him run out, and you're gonna hit some wind blown snow. Oh, we'll on the drop in, and we'll figure it out from there. That was crazy. That was so sick. Like we got over the ridge, didn't slow down too much. And then when I saw that it was all clear, we, we had such good turns. Those turns in there were unreal. I'd do it again, like off camera, just because it was so fun. So with Stargards, because you lose your central vision, um, depending on the type of skiing that you're doing, so for him, if he's trying to ski around a gate, if he tries to look at that gate, he may not even be able to see it because it might be in his blind spot. So that's why he needs his guide to basically tell him where he's going and if he's going in the right direction. Right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's definitely the first time I've skied with a younger guy. Super tanky here. <laughs> Tristan's a little bit more green and a lot, a lot more eager to, to get after it. Right foot, left foot, and then the right footer next yes. third turn. Stop. Even if he's a good skier, like if we don't get along as as people, it's uh, it's 
it's not really going to be a good relationship because we spend so much time together off snow and we need to be working together all the time. You can film Mac, I don't need skis. I can't see, so. <laughs> uh, what's your phone number again? Four and six? No. Six foot nine? Yeah, something like that. Ability. Oh, I like this one. Not good. I'm actually I'm pretty good at that. My signature? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anyone can keep up with Tristan's energy. Like, the guy is always go, go, go. Okay. All right, let's do it. Just short radius turn behind me. Cool. OK, buddy. Yeah, I got your snow dust. The whole factor of me having some sort of responsibility for Mac's safety and trying to, you know, relay the information that will keep him safe was really difficult. Like basically, we're gonna come down. I'm gonna go like, doosh, 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 past the tree. Yeah, past the tree. Trend, like, stay left. Yeah. Into the chute, and the chute will bring you up that ridge. I think in the racing aspect, Mac is really dialed and he knows exactly what he wants from the guide. In free skiing, we had no idea what was going to work and what wasn't. OK, ready? I'm going to go down, make a few turns, and wait for you. OK. Drop it. Couple turns here. Traverse. Yeah, do two turns, fall line, and then come to me. This is long, down your left, head down, come to me. Oh, now what? Now we make two Couple. turns and stop, and we're going to exit on the shoe. BC? Yep. And then um, you'll have a big, wide open section where you can cut left and dump speed. Yep. Like when I went down, I was fine, confident. And then when Mac came, like if anything went wrong, I was like right underneath you. If there's something to learn, it's just to trust him and, and let him run, just like ski racing. No stress. Hands up, hands up, hands up. Flares, wow. These boys are working well together. The fear of injury is definitely in the back of our head. You know, there's a lot of time and money invested in us for, for ski racing. He's always had a bit of like a slip disc. And last November, um, that acted out again, and it was pretty bad. I spent that whole season just trying to recover to the point where I could walk around and cruise around. But to start training again, it just took so long, just slowly waiting for my back to come back to one piece. I think injuries in ski racing in general are quite downplayed. It almost comes off as casual when you say he injured his back, but it takes so much commitment to return from something like that, especially when you don't know when you're going to be back at 100%. The forefront of our minds is to keep everyone healthy. Even though ski racing is extremely gnarly and they go at crazy speeds and do crazy things. It's in a race course that's got safety nets and there's people watching and there's medical teams like right there. Whereas in the free ride world, like there's none of that. It really his, his like faith is in Tristan and their ability to ski. Often, have you skied the coffin and can you ski the coffin? You can ski the coffin. Just don't hurt yourselves, please. Yeah. Somebody's got to say it. 
Morning, dude. Just got that. Thank you. What are your uh, thoughts on the coffin today? A little bit nervous, like with conditions, you know, it's pretty beat up. So yeah. I think with the fresh snow, it'll be a bit easier. Yeah, I think it might Maybe be a little. rock will be covered. I doubt it. I doubt it, too. Yeah. <laughs> so you like kind of banking on just like stepping in, or are you just going to jump in and go? I think so. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know yet. I guess I just have to look at it. <laughs> Good luck with that. Straight line, and then you pull up. That's super chill. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty explosive on your left. All the way in down to the right. When I'm guiding Mac, the biggest fear of mine is um, falling. In free skiing, things can get a little dangerous. I think Mac at heart is generally like a free ride, push to the limits type of guy. We kind of, as like a high performance staff, have to know where the limit is to let Mac push into like his own free world and do these things but also rein him in enough that he's not gonna really hurt himself. Same as the other day. Worse? Yeah, just do it. You're in? You might wanna step down a little bit just in case. Okay, I'm coming in. gives me goosebumps all the time just watching him do stuff and I couldn't imagine what he's feeling when he can't even see what he's doing. I just need to stand up for a second. My back was cramping so hard. Yeah. What's the deal below you? It's scraped out um, and there's a rock on the left tails. Now you're relying on two people to not really screw up because there's not really room for error in the middle of it. Okay, ready? Yeah. You got this. Okay. As a mom, you worry, of course, I think because of his impairment, you worry a little more. Okay, over the air and turn left. Okay. Three, two, one, drop it! So sick. Made it. That was sweet. Yeah, you did awesome. Good job. So excited. We had just had so much fun just booting around. It opened up a whole new world of skiing, and I'm pretty friggin' stoked about it. There's a lot of similarities between us, us learning this whole new free skiing world and, and Mac and BJ's progression in alpine ski racing. And I think if if it continues the way that his ski racing career has, I, I think the possibilities are endless for what he can achieve in, in free skiing. Hopefully, uh, drawing some attention around it can like inspire a lot more people to do whatever they want instead of feel like they have to go into a Paralympic sport. Canadian Para Paralympic team. Oh, you guys are? Yeah. So how about you? I'm sorry. I got uh, no central and 6% uh, in the peripheral. 6% peripheral? Yeah. Come on! Right.